2006. How old were you? What were you doing? TSM's Björksen was 10 years old. The StarCraft Champion Life was 9. The ESL started running Intel Extreme Masters in 2006. It has existed for half of those players' lives. Our beginnings were at a time when CRT monitors were still a thing and Warcraft 3 was a top game. Fly is really going really for there are so many wisps there around. By today's standards, it wasn't glamorous, it was little. We were talking about tens of thousands of viewers, not millions. But we wanted to travel the world and show gamers on all continents what esports was all about. The thrill, the passion, the joy, the hard work, the excitement. He's very low. Oh, no, we started in the corner of a trade show, but this is becoming history. 50 odd events, and today we are here in a major US sports arena. Intel Extreme Masters San Jose. This is the new chapter, and you are in it. and we're broadcasting to you live from the legendary SAP Center here in downtown San Jose. And while it's actually the first time that we come to a sports stadium in North America with the Intel Xtreme Masters, so it's going to be an incredible weekend as we go looking for our next IEM champion. Now, let's take a look at the schedule to see what we've got planned for you guys. We're going to start off today with our two quarterfinal best of three games, followed by our first semifinal, also best of three. Then we'll be back tomorrow at noon Pacific, which is 9 p.m. Central European time, as we kick off our second semifinal, also a best of three. Then we'll have our celebrity ARAM game, where Hot Chat GG takes on St. Vicious. <laughs> I see you guys are hyped for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we will close everything off with the grand final, a best of five to find out who will be our next Intel Xtreme Masters champion right here in San Jose. That's what we've got in store for you. And now I'm going to let the guys over at the expert desk take things over. Thank you very much, Shocks. I am Rivington Bison III here at the expert desk with my brain trust for this tournament here at the Intel Xtreme Masters. Steven Snoopy Ellis, we have Christopher Monte Cristo Michaels, and obviously Brandon St. Vicious DeMarco. Guys, thanks for joining me on the desk. We're going to have an awesome week. We kind of get to see the North American scene, plus a few other teams in the European scene, kind of take a stab at 420 here. We get the new patch. We're going to be having a lot to go through. So let's take a look at the brackets first to see how today is going to roll out. We are going to have three games today. They are in best of three formats. And our first matchup, as Shock said, is going to be that Unicorns of Love versus Lion Gaming. Next up, we're going to have Pain Gaming versus Cloud9. And then we'll see between that first game of Unicorns Corns in Love versus uh, Lion Gaming, who will face off against Team Solo Mid in the third matchup of the day. There's a lot to talk about as we go into this weekend. There's a lot for you, the viewers, to keep your eyes open and ears uh, open as well, eyes peeled and ears open, if you will, for that and all the information we have. And there's so much to talk about. Let's start with the fact that Patch 420 now, we're going to see these games. We've seen a bit of OGN uh, hitting that up over the past few weeks. I'll start with you, Monte Cristo. You've kind of been, that's your realm. <laughs> what have things been like? Just, it, has it been crazy? Has it kind of been relaxed? Well, I mean, we're going to see a lot of differences coming in here. And I know that Steven and I, Snoopy here, have been watching some of the teams scrim here in the West as well. And there's been such a diversity in terms of the champions that we've seen. I've seen a lot of stuff in scrims that I haven't seen at OGN. I've seen a lot of stuff 
an OGN that I haven't seen in scrims, but kind of the, the main storyline has been a lot of these poke-oriented, big AP long-range mages in the mid lane. It's all about controlling that dragon. It's all about controlling the Baron fights right now because that's the fastest way to victory. And those percentage stats that you can get from the dragon really do stack up in the late game. And that new Baron buff makes it mean that if you get that first Baron, it's almost certainly going to be an immediate win. And talk about the stacks a little bit. Obviously, our jungle is here on the table. What is kind of the priority of Dragon now? Will we see teams kind of giving up first Dragon, allowing that to happen, wanting it, want first three? So it seems that every single team around like 13 minute mark seems to prioritize Dragon. Um, and that's why we're seeing a lot, as Monty said, a lot of these uh, mages like Zerath or your LeBlancs or these, these kind of control champions that kind of dictate, or dictate how people come into the Dragon. They basically poke them down before getting in and make a 4v1 happen, for example, very early on. And that's like also the AD carries. It's it's mm -hmm. leaked into the AD carries as well with some of the nerfs, but Corky, Ezreal, these champions, yep. they can poke the other team off of those objectives are very highly prioritized. Yeah, I think Corky is going to be probably one of the top contested picks here. Like every, every AD carry I talk to, they're like, oh, there's like Lucian, he's in there. There's like Ezreal, he's in there. But Corky is just like the Ferrari of the AD carries around. He does everything you need to do. He has a great power spike with the Triforce, and of course he has the poke. So are we going to expect these to be kind of, as we went into Worlds, people said mid-game, mid-lane. What do we kind of think for this, Monty? What, what is the aspect we'll be looking at for these games? Uh, it's, like I said, we may see some LeBlanc like we've seen in the yeah. Korean scene because that gives you a hybrid poke champion because she can get in and out so quick, quickly with distortion that she can serve as a poke champion as well as having that assassination role. But also champions like Zareth, we may see a little bit of Twisted Fate as well coming in. Just It's all about that long range. It's all about the control that you get in the mid lane right now. Because if you can poke your opponent out of the mid lane too, it can give you a free shot at that first dragon, which is so huge. Because those 8% stats that you get on AD yeah. and AP out of that, because it's a percentage stat, the longer the game goes, the gold value of that goes up and up and up and up and up. So we have items, we have dragon, we have a lot to look at in the game, and even some changes outside the game. We're going to be allowing coaches now. I want to get your guys' perspective on this. Behind the players, we've seen, you know, in the past, Team Solo mid did make a swap because there was the happenings in champion select. Players weren't picking what they kind of wanted to pick. They were doing it for themselves. That somewhat happens when people want to get, get it done, just make it happen. How have you felt in those situations, and what do you think a coach can bring to the table? I think it's actually extremely important that a coach is in... Uh, in this setting in Champion Select because what players do when they go into it, they have a clear strategy they go into it. The coach sets it out beforehand and it seems to be very clear cut and they know what they're doing. And then for some reason, when they go into Champion Select, you'll know about this, Monty, it all just <laughs> falters, <laughs> it completely know. falters apart. It's I, the uh, wild card picks and bans, well, man. Somebody like bans something, like our whole strategy is revolved around picking Jace. And then like they first ban Jace and you're like, oh, like, oh my God, what do we do? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, come on, man. I got to call you out a little bit here because on your show, League Central, you were of the mind that these coaches <laughs> were not going to okay, affect not, those not picks for, and bans. Not for our team right. personally or something. Oh, I want to get, okay. get back to this. I want to get back to this later, but we do have to throw it over to Shox right now. We're going to get the player intros and get those guys on stage.